Hey guys, I'm going to try and keep 4-1 as quick and painful as possible here, so here we go. We're going to skip the first one. Um, four one is going to be all about quadratic functions. And if you remember, we kind of saw a sneak peek of these in chapter two. They graph to be these U shapes. By the way, it will always be either a U up or a U down. It's never going to be a U sideways. And the reason for that is, is then it wouldn't be a function. Think about that vertical line test, okay? It crosses the parabola twice. So that's not a function. So they will always open up or down. By the way, this is pretty cool where it has the different um, terms. Where it has the x squared, we call that the quadratic term. Notice a, b, and c, those are going to be regular boring numbers. But we're going to be using those to solve for different things today. Check this out. Remember when I had lines and it was just y equals mx plus b? look familiar to bx plus c. Why we don't use bx plus c for regular boring lines, I don't know, but this is the variables that some guy who died a long time ago decided we would use. And you, I just want you to kind of notice that similarity there. That's why where it's just the x, we're going to call that the linear term. b goes with the linear term. And c is going to be the constant term. All right, so let's go ahead and hit up some definitions first. Um, three things that I'm going to be very interested in today are going to be the vertex. The vertex is where the um, parabola turns around. So if it opens up, the vertex is at the bottom. And if it opens down, the vertex is at the top. I also care about the axis of symmetry. That's that thing there in red. And basically what that is, if I was going to take this graph pick it up and fold it along this dashed line here, the graph would be an exact mirror. Um, it would lay exactly on top of itself. We're going to see how that affects our tables here in just a minute. And then last but not least, I'm going to care about the y-intercept. Here's the cool thing. You remember in our linear equations, y equals mx plus b, b was the y-intercept? Well, it turns out the exact same. For quadratic functions, if you remember that b plus bx plus c is kind of the like the y equals mx plus b portion, so c is actually the y-intercept. So that's pretty cool. Like when I want to come down here and graph this one, um, I already know that the y-intercept is at six. So I know there's a point there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I already know that's a point. Pretty cool. So now, this little thing here is going to be super duper important. First of all, that's the formula for the axis of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a. Um, but it's also how you're going to find the x of the vertex right here. Oops, right here. This is very, very important because you're going to use this a lot. Learn to love negative b over 2a. That's the little formula you're going to use to figure out, oops, in a five point table, what number do you put in the middle? So for my function, uh, negative five x squared minus 10 x plus six, my b in this case is negative 10, right? Because it's ax squared plus bx, we'll see. So if it's negative b and b is negative 10, that's going to end up giving me a double negative, which is just 10. And then it's 2 times a. And a in this case is negative 5. So I end up with 10 divided by negative 10, which is negative 1. That's how you know what to put in the middle of your table. And then from there, I just want you to fill in um, a couple more numbers on either side. Then what you're going to do is take every single one of these and plug them into this equation up here. I already have this done so that I can save us a little time. Um, let's see. It is negative 9, negative, oh I'm sorry, positive 6, 11, 6, and negative 9. Oh hey, do you check out this? The vertex 
which was that negative b over 2a, it has a nice, happy, unique number, but do you notice that everything else mirrors? That's on purpose, right? When I was up here talking about that axis of symmetry, that's how it happens. So plot all these points, negative 3, negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, negative 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, 11, 0, 6. Oh, hey, conveniently, that's right where I already knew the y-intercept was going to be. Funny how that happened. And then 1, negative 9. Connect the dots in as smooth of a curve as you can. FYI, Delta Math does the curve drawing for you, which is super awesome. And there it is. So if they ask you to find things, you can do that. So, for example, it says... Um, find the y-intercept. Again, y-intercept is C. Where was that? Right here. Y-intercept is C. So, where should I write that? Right here. Y-int for y-intercept equals the C was 6. Next it says, hey, the equation for the axis of symmetry. The equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So for, I write this as axis of sim. And it's just x equals, when we plug the negative b over 2a, we got negative 1. There it is. That line graphs right here. That wasn't a very good graphing, but there it is. You don't have to graph that, by the way. Uh, and then what did it ask me for? The x-coordinate of the vertex. Folks, the x-coordinate of the vertex, again, is just negative b over 2a. So x of vertex equals negative 1. You already found that. Um, another thing I want you to know is minimum and maximum values. If it opens up, I mean, it goes up forever. And if it opens down, it goes down forever. But each of these have a value that it either can't go lower than or higher than. And those are going to be our minimum or maximums. You might notice those happen at exactly the, um, the vertex. So even though <clears throat> on a parabola it's going to get very tall and, and not have very much horizontal movement... It is going to go on forever in the left and right directions, which means um, this is going to have a domain and range of all, or I'm sorry, going to have a domain of all reals. So domain is always all, I have no idea how I did that, reals. There we go. Your range. Let me let me make a like like a note up here. If it is if it has a maximum, then y is less than or equal to the y of your vertex. If your parabola opens up, then y is greater than or equal to the y of the vertex. Okay, now here's the thing. On number 3, they want me to determine the domain and range. Well, they don't even tell me, give me a picture, or give me a graph to do that. So, what you can look at is the a value. Remember, a, x squared, plus bx plus c. If a is positive, then it's going to open up. And if a is negative, it's going to open down. It's that easy. So, look at number three. Is a positive or negative? It's positive, which means it opens up. Since it opens up, it has a minimum. If it says state the minimum or maximum value of the function, it's saying, what is the y of the vertex? Okay, great. Do your negative b over 2a. In this case, uh, b is negative 24. a is 4. So I have a positive 24 over 8, which is... Three? Is that correct? 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that 3 back into this equation. So 4 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3 plus 11. And take my word for it, it's going to be negative 25. So my vertex is 3 and negative 25. Okay, so if it says state the minimum value of the function, the minimum value is negative 25. Domain is always all reals. Since it opens up, that means my range is y is greater than or equal to negative 25. All right, that's as quick and painful as I can make it.